So today I'm making borscht soup. Now, if you're not familiar with that, I wasn't either. I'm gonna call this a classic version of this soup. It originated in the Ukraine and it's very popular in Russia. Now, how I got a hold of this recipe was from my neighbor who had a friend who was in the country of Almada, Kazakhstan. I'm terrible at pronunciation, so I'm gonna put it right here for you so you can read that country. So my friend's friend had a driver while she was there and he would drive them around. His name is Sasha Rogachev and he apparently is a very good cook and I wanna give a shout out to him because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have this recipe. It is, like I said, so delicious. It's, that's why I have to make it for you. Okay, so basically this is a beetroot soup with some beef in it, cabbage, some carrots, garlic. I mean, there's lots of good vegetables in this. It is very healthy and I think you're gonna love it. I'm Rockin' Robin and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after my chef joke. So what is a ghost's favorite soup? Scream of tomato. <laughs> so we're gonna start our recipe off here with our two pound grass-fed chuck roast. First things up, preheat your cast iron pan over medium high heat. While the pan's getting hot, I'm going to season the beef with a little bit of salt, even though the recipe didn't call for it. Remember, you can get the written recipe below the video in the description area. We're gonna go ahead and salt both sides of this piece of meat. Once that pan gets hot, you can tell by it'll start smoking a bit, drop in some olive oil, just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Give that oil a little swirl by just lifting it up and that way it'll coat the whole bottom of the pan easily. And you can see now that those lines in the oil, it's hot. When you go to place that meat in the pan, place it away from you so you don't get splashed in case anything gets kicked up. Now don't touch that piece of meat, just let it sear for like two to three minutes and then we'll do the same thing on the other side and I'm even gonna hold it up on its end so that we can get the edges as well. I'm also dropping in a little bit of butter and that just adds for more flavor. Here's our first flip at about two and a half minutes and then I'll take my tongs to hold the meat up on its edge for 20 to 30 seconds. Once the edges are done, we'll place our meat into an oven-proof dish. Now we're gonna pour some beef broth, and you could use chicken broth too if you want, uh, right over the meat, and then we're gonna place this in the oven. Put a lid on this and place it in the oven at 325 degrees for two hours. Okay, we have plenty of time here for chef joke number two while our stew is cooking. What kind of candy do you eat and the playground? Recess pieces. While the beef is cooking in the oven, now we have time to prep up all of our vegetables that are going into this. I'll start off here with chopping up my yellow onion, and this is the super fine dice. Next, I'll prepare some fresh garlic by cutting off the end, and then give it a little smash like you would the like button if you're enjoying this video. This makes it very easy to get the paper off the garlic. You can certainly chop the garlic by hand, but running it through a press just makes it a lot quicker. Here's that chuck roast after it came out of the oven after two hours. You could even go over if it's not tender enough, let it go longer. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling it apart and I'm removing some of the big pieces of fat. Now feel free to either chop up the chuck roast or shred it. I like the shredded version myself. And you'll want to remove any excess fat as you go. Once the meat is all shredded, place it back into its baking dish. Now what the author also suggested you could do is cook the meat the day before, then refrigerate it after you've shredded it up, and then you can skim off the fat that's risen to the top. Then I place the chilled meat back on the stove just to heat it up gently. Okay, so I have a stock pot here. I'm gonna place some olive oil in the bottom to just coat it a bit. And then I'm gonna add the onions first. We'll add the garlic second, just because we don't want that to burn. And we wanna cook the onions for probably about five minutes. Oops, I almost forgot. We need to add some really good butter to the onions. So I'm using some Kerrygold here and we'll just work that in. During the last minute of cooking the onions, we're gonna add the garlic and just cook that for one minute. So while those Onions are cooking slowly over low heat. We're gonna prep up some more veggies. So we have our carrots here. We're just gonna peel them and cut them into little coins. And I'll set those aside. Next, we're prepping up a russet potato. So we'll just give that a little peel and then we'll cut it into bite-sized chunks. 
once we get the potato cut up, then we're going to want to place that into a bowl of water because we're not going to put this in the soup just yet. It's going to be sitting out and it'll oxidize if we don't put it in water. All right, let's prep up some red cabbage. You can use green cabbage as well. But all we're going to do here is remove the core and then we're going to slice this up into half inch chunks. It doesn't have to be super small. And then I'll run my knife through it in the other direction. We'll place the cabbage in a bowl and set it aside. Okay, stay with me here. We got a little more chopping to do. Up next is a beet. Uh, well, actually, there's a couple of beets in this because, well, that's what this soup is all about. This has such a nice, earthy, sweet flavor. You're going to love it. And it's not overpowering. So what you want to do here is rinse first and then peel your beet. I found that using a potato peeler works just great. And you're going to cube up the beets just like you did the potato. Keep in mind that beets stain, so no wearing any white clothes when you're prepping this up. So our stew meat is warmed up gently again, so now I'm going to take the beef out of it and set it aside. I'm straining it here because I'm going to pour the juice into my pot with the onions. To that we're going to add the beets, the carrots, and a can of diced tomatoes including the juice. You can add some more beef broth if you need it to cover all of the vegetables. We're going to turn the temperature up to high and we're going to bring this to a boil. Then I'm going to lower the heat and simmer it with a lid for about an hour or until the carrots and the beets are tender. After about 50 minutes of cooking, now it's time to add the beef. We're also going to add a little bit of brown sugar, the cabbage, and then we'll add some red wine vinegar. Give that a stir and let's add a little more beef broth because it's getting a little bit thick. We're going to simmer this the same way as we did before for about 20 to 30 minutes. The last thing I have to do before we dig into this soup is to cut up a little bit of fresh dill and some Italian parsley. Shave off a nice handful here and then chop it up nice and small. Now the recipe calls for adding the drained potatoes and cooking them for 15 minutes. But personally, I think we could have added them prior to this during the last addition. But I'm going to follow the recipe here. Before we cover this, let me give this a taste and see if we need to add any salt. So yeah, I need to add a pinch of salt. So I'm covering this one last time and we'll cook it for 15 minutes. It's time to serve it up. And before we do, we're going to add the dill and the parsley. Look at how delicious this soup looks. It's that bright red color. It'll knock your socks off. Boy, this soup is hearty. It will warm up your bones. It's got great flavor, and I think it's the addition of the vinegar with the acid it mellows out the sweetness in this dish. Now, here's a nice way to garnish this up. You could use sour cream, but I would prefer using yogurt, which I did here, with a little bit of fresh dill on the side. Let me know in the comments if you plan on making this dish. So if you make the borscht soup, you've got to try this garlic bread. Oh my God, it would be so perfect with it. Click the link on the screen. It'll take you right to the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know by smashing the like button and leaving me a comment. And a, and a big shout out, a thank you one last time to Sasha for this great recipe. All right, we'll see you back here next week for another rockin' recipe.